Still working on trying to make these videos shorter each time. Link down below as always to credit WWE for putting this together. Pat McAfee and Michael Cole opened up the show in the middle of the ring to announce that there's going to be a women's battle royal in order to crown a new champion that very night on Raw. Jay Uso, number one contender for the World Heavyweight Championship against Damian Priest in Backlash France in two weeks is when they're going to face off. Chats about having to prove himself and then Priest came out alone to new music. He was praising Jay Uso. It was actually a really good promo. By Priest, JD McNugget came out to ambush Jay, but it didn't work out. Ended up resulting in having uh, Damian Priest getting super kicked, which I think that was going to be going towards JD McNugget. Mc <laughs> JD McNugget. JD. <laughs> okay. JD McNugget. Mc whatever. And uh, Priest seemed more upset at JD than Jey Uso kicking him, kicking him in the face. It helps if I could speak properly. It really, really does. Things were really hectic yesterday for me, and I just could not get to making this video. Uh, it's not like these videos are super important. They're kind of like filler content just to keep my channel active, to be honest with you. But I do love making them. Uh, Saudi Arabia is going to have a king and queen of the ring, which I think is really cool. Going to be awesome. Speaking of awesome, I didn't do that on purpose. Awesome Truth defeated DIY in a World Tag Team title match. And it was good. I enjoyed it. I just... I just appreciate them. I really like The Miz. And at the end of the match, what I wanted to note was that... You know what I mean? Tomato Champ wasn't really on board with Shaken Hands. He just left a ring... Irritated, frustrated, and that's okay. That can happen. It happens. Backstage Judgment Day, Priest is not happy uh, with JD. Dom brings out Santos to fill in for, J uh, for himself. For Dom, that is. Because <laughs> he's injured, his arm is in a sling, he's banged up. And then there's rumors that Damien Priest could turn face. Because one thing I forgot to mention... Did I forget to mention this, or did I, or do I end up mentioning it later? I'll just say it now. Priest at one point said to Dom and JD, I don't need any of you. You need me. That doesn't sound like a really nice thing to say to your friends that you're part of the crew, like we all need each other. So it makes me wonder, could he end up going solo but still being heel? I don't know. But rumor has it, that he's in for a face turn. Gunther with Imperium in the ring. First time we see Gunther. He was uh, thankful in some ways about uh, Sammy lifting that burden that he had to carry for 666 days. Keeping that championship elevated. He thanked Sammy. He didn't give any excuses. He wasn't there to reinvoke or invoke. Reinvoke? I'm French. To invoke his rematch clause. He wants to move on to bigger, better things. And uh, then, which I had forgotten, New Day came out. And Xavier Woods, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, is the last King of the Ring. Correct me if I'm wrong. So basically, Xavier Woods was like, hey man, I'm defending my throne. Two time. King of the Ring, two, and or he wants to go for two. Either one twice, or he's going for two. I forget. I'm sorry. It's been a rough last couple of days. I don't want to complain, but I usually do check out my information and fact check myself first. And if I don't know the proper statistic, I just let you know that I'm not sure. And then Gunther was like, you know what? This is beneath me. Have Imperium face off against the New Day. Which happened. And Gunther never got involved. He sat at ringside. Again, I really, really appreciate that. Stayed at ringside. And then, unfortunately, Kaiser snapped. Once Gunther had walked away backstage. Kaiser attacked Giovanni. I don't know what's going to happen to Gio. But I like him. He's like me. Until I wake up in the morning. Because I'm not quite that. You know what I mean? I'm not quite that fit. Uh, I just, I like Imperium 
and this is like clearly not going well. I don't know if Gio is going to get released. I know it sounds bad, but Cameron Grimes got released, posted an emotional video on social media. I liked the guy. He had a good run in NXT. I didn't know too much about him, but he had a, a memorable run in NXT, and then he came up to the main roster, no fault of his own, and it just, uh, you know, didn't, didn't quite work out, it looks like. So yeah, I don't know if Gio's going to get repackaged because he did the move he did to, what was it, Kingston before? Where he runs around the ring while his opponent is face down on the stairs and he kicked Gio really hard. So I don't know if he's going to be out with an injury, then come back rebranded. I have no idea, but I am very intrigued to see where this is going to go. But I want to leave off with this, sorry. When Ludwig Kaiserbun went backstage, you know, that thing they do now with the camera, they follow the superstar backstage. Well, Gunther was there. And I was like, uh-oh. Like, I because for that split second, we didn't know how he was going to react. But Gunther was on board with that. So it's it's sad. But to be honest, I, I kind of saw it coming. I mean, if anybody was going to get expelled from Imperium, it definitely wasn't going to be... Ludwig Kaiser, just the way things were going. Gio always getting picked on. Anyways, vignette promo with Andrade talking about the Judgment Day and how he doesn't have anybody tell him what to do. It wasn't about business. It was about you know control, using him as a servant. Very good promo. Like I said, I don't know much about Andrade at all, but since his return, there is... And I've talked about this before in many of my other videos... Uh, about certain superstars. Sometimes they come out and you're just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Like there's no instant, ooh, kind of thing. If the, I, I don't know how to explain it, okay? And I get that with Andrade. The, oh, like I liked that. I have no idea who he is. Don't know much about him. He is married to Charlotte Flair. Ric Flair is his father-in-law. But I just, I no offense, didn't really pay much attention to his first run. And now I'm paying attention more to the product as well because I'm making all these videos and I'm like, I'm on board with this guy. I just, I love it. So anyways, this was great. The Drew McIntyre, and again, you can watch part of it. Drew McIntyre in-ring promo, pretty crude, but again, funny. Drew, I've said that every freaking time. If he does it every time, I'm going to say it every time. My God, that guy's good on the mic. And you know what? Sheamus came out to lay out on Drew telling him he's obsessed with punk, which is true. It was just funny. And then he's like, you're right. We used to do banger after banger. And now it's burger after burger. And now Seamus says if he wins King of the Ring, which I kind of hope he does, actually. He wants to be named Burger King. <laughs> then I found an old picture of him actually eating a, a burger from Burger King with Cesaro. And I, I just, I love Seamus, man. Like, I, I just, I do. I really do. I like Drew a lot. Just because somebody's a heel doesn't mean you can't like them. So yeah, Drew in-ring promo with uh, Sheamus. This was good. They're friends. They poked fun at each other. And then at the end, it was kind of interesting how... Sorry, I got distracted with the match here. How Drew said, I'll watch your back. Like he's like, I'll watch your back. But then it made it sound like he was like almost threatening Sheamus. So during the... Excuse me, the match... Look! It's about what I... Well, not quite. He's a little bit slimmer than me. My my handle comes out just a smidgen out. A tiny itty-bitty bit. I like looking at that because this gives me an idea of what I look like. Minus all the hair. And, uh, yeah. So Seamus defeated Shinsuke Nakamura. And Drew did not get involved. He didn't come in the ring after. There was no post-match shenanigans. I just thought that I would mention that because with Drew, you just, you don't know. He could get very violent. Backstage interview with Sami Zayn about Chad, Big Bronson. Oh yeah, sorry. Backstage interview with Sami Zayn about, you know, Chad. And I don't think there's anything he could say to excuse what he did. But then Big Bronson Reed showed up and he's like, I want a title shot. Or actually, he didn't say that. Sami's like, let me guess. You want this? Anytime, any place, you can have a match. Sounds good. Gives the guy what he wants. But then as he walks away, turns around and cowardly attacked 
Sami Zayn. So I did not like that from a scripted perspective because Bronson Reed doesn't need to do that at all. Chad Gable with Alpha Academy. How come they don't show that here? It was kind of a big moment. Chad Gable comes out with Alpha Academy, jealously trying to justify his actions for attacking Sammy in Montreal. Man, did he ever rip into Tazawa, Maxine, and Otis, ridiculing them all, saying that Maxine's as dumb as a bag of rocks. <clears throat> so, in the end, he was basically pleading, saying, we're still going to help me get my title right. And then Otis like, oh, okay. So I don't know if the whole faction is going to turn heel. But again, even when you're heel, if you have the people that are supposed to be on your side ridiculing you, I don't know. And backstage, Ricochet was approached by Dirty Dom momentarily, and then Liv Morgan shares a stare with Dom. Wonder what that's about, eh? And then it just kind of moves away because they're kind of like fucking with your head, going, mm, maybe there's something here, maybe there isn't. And then Santos Escobar and the JD McNugget versus Ricochet and Andrade. Ricochet and Andrade did defeat them. And then Priest came out to lay out the winners. Oh, and it was then, it was then, that Priest said, I don't need you guys. You guys need me. And then, of course, the Women's Battle Royal. I mean, she earned it. I do like Becky a lot. I really do. I really, really do. Uh, she couldn't get the job done. I'm just kidding. She didn't win at Mania against Rhea, but Rhea vacated the title. Due to a real life injury. And as a result. Oh it looks like you can watch the whole thing. And as a result. Uh, they had uh, Becky now win it. Now that Rhea's injured. And I'm okay with that. Because compared to the other competitors. That were in the ring. I mean you knew Maxine wasn't going to get it. Ivy wasn't going to get it. I'm not trying to be rude. But there's some people in there. That are like, yeah that's definitely not who's going to be there. Or uh, who's there that's going to win it. Helps if I can... Half the time I feel like I can't speak properly. But all in all, with all these little things like the Liv Morgan stare, the Damien Priest, I don't need you thing, the new music, new women's champion, just all these like little things that happened, the burger after banger, the banger burger, burger banger, whatever. All these little moments, the Geo thing with Ludwig Kaiser, like just boom, boom, boom. Uh, yeah, I, I was uh, I was entertained. To me, this had the E in WWE. It was a pretty decent decent week. I don't really have much to complain about. There's always going to be nitpicking stuff that I could talk about. But I don't really want to do that. Thumbs up if you liked the video. It does greatly help support the channel with the algorithm. And trying to make me more relevant in the search results. If you didn't like the video, something different might happen this time. Instead of me bending the thumb, twisting it, and giving you a solo Sokoan spike in the candy ass... You'll get super kicked in the chin while you're sleeping, and then you'll wake up to that look as you wake up. It's not going to be a pretty sight. And if you want to subscribe, obviously that, that would be great now, wouldn't it? But if not, exactly. Thanks for stopping by anyways. Take care, and maybe I'll see some of you in the next one. Bye for now.